Hi everyone, welcome back to Bet Me a Date. Today I'm going to be speaking with Pat Pearson um, from her Diamond Girls podcast, and she's actually going to be interviewing me about dating and loneliness during this time of COVID for women and how it affects women. Subscribe to our channel for more information about dating and isolation and how hard it can be to date when you're feeling lonely and isolated. Okay, good evening. Good evening and welcome back to the Diamond Girls podcast. This week, Diamond Girls, we have the most awesome and famous Dr. Aviva Kat Gaskill. Excuse me. Dr. Gaskill is well known in her area for the work that she does. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'm well. You are welcome. Thank you for taking time out from your patience and your busy schedule to come on and speak with our listeners here on the Diamond Girls podcast. Can you give us a little history about yourself? Yeah, so um, I am a clinical psychologist. Um, I have a practice right outside of Philadelphia. Um, and I actually practice uh, mostly in health psychology. So I see people who have physical issues, physical illnesses, but also have depression and anxiety along with that. A lot of people with chronic pain conditions, neurological issues, uh, that kind of thing. And then who also live with depression and anxiety. And I also see folks who don't necessarily have any major medical issues, but also live with depression and anxiety. Doctor, how long have you been practicing? So I have been in practice, um, I've had my own practice since 2013, um, and uh, I have been a licensed psychologist since 2012. Okay, congratulations, wonderful. Tell us, what made you go into psychology? What was your interest? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. I always just really loved people. I've always loved people. I've always loved connecting with people. Um, the people in my, in my personal life, um, they sort of know me as being someone who is hyper-social and, and um, someone who is really connected to other people. And I like to have deep, meaningful connections with other people. I also enjoy the lighter friendships too. Okay. Now, during this time of year, doctor, we have what we call, um, do we call it anxiety, dating anxiety? I think you specialize in this area. For some of the people, our listeners out there that may have lost a significant other this year due to COVID mm -hmm. or was single prior to COVID, prior to the shutdown, tell us about dating anxiety. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So there's no definition, there's no official definition of dating anxiety per se, but, um, you know, folks who um, live with anxiety, and a lot of times it might be social anxiety, um, it might be people who don't have very good people skills or very good communication skills, um, people who have problems with self-confidence, maybe someone who's in recovery um, from drinking or drug use, or as you mentioned, right, someone who hasn't dated in many, many, many years. Um, that often creates, because you're just out of practice, right, those things really create a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress for people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the hope is in my work, I mean, I'm a health psychologist, but I also have this business that I'm, I've created um, helping people to learn more about getting in touch with themselves um, mm -hmm. and overcoming some of the obstacles that they have in dating mm -hmm. and um, just how to get back out there and start dating again. Um, but you are right, especially during this time of year, during the holiday season and and also with COVID going on, a lot of people are out of practice with dating or it feels uncomfortable or they may not like being on the internet to try and date. And that's really challenging for a lot of folks. So what are some of the things that causes um, 
the the challenges, as you may call it, the challenges in meeting someone or who don't have those skills. Yeah. So, like you said, right? So, be being out of practice is again one major one, right? If I was married for thirty years, my spouse dies, right? Um, you know, trying to get back into the dating world is going to be really challenging emotionally. With that said, it's really just a matter of putting yourself out there and getting back out there and trying Um, because nothing's going to happen if you don't try. Um, You know, I think for other folks, having one or more negative dating experiences, um, maybe you felt like you went on a date and you didn't feel like you were your best self or it went really poorly um, or you really embarrassed yourself in some way. Well, that happens to everyone sometimes. But for some people, that can create a situation where they feel really overwhelmed and they feel like they can't get back out there and they can't put themselves back out there. Um, And so a big part of it is, you know, not misattributing a negative experience to yourself, right? It could be that the person that you were on the date with had a really crappy night, or maybe you were having a really crappy night. And Mm -hmm. that was what was going on. It wasn't about, you know, that you messed something up. I mean, sometimes the vibe is just not there. Right. We've all gone into a a party, right? And sometimes the party is happening and it's wonderful. And sometimes the party's like, meh, you know, so it's not, you're not feeling it. just a fit. It just doesn't yeah. fit. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think, you know, try keeping on trying to find, like you said, that fit is mm-hmm. huge, huge. What about a person that's older? You said a person that was married for years, <sighs> a person that's older, is it more that they would go to someone from their past what would you say to that person that's older, maybe 60, 61, and now I find myself alone? Yeah. And, and especially during this time of year, right? Yes. Uh, and your kids are, maybe if you have kids, they are grown up and out of the house, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That would be really, really hard, especially during this pandemic. Um, and I want to highlight that because this you know, you and I were talking before we started recording that this year in particular, Thanksgiving can always be a lonely time. Um, If, you know, you're not with family for the holidays and you're just by yourself, but particularly this year because you can't see your family and you can't see your friends and you can't see maybe other folks in your life. That is really challenging. And I, the, um, the World Health Organization has really, and other um, health organizations all around the globe in various countries have really started to pay attention to this idea of loneliness a lot more Mm -hmm. because it it actually causes major medical issues for people over time, right? Prolonged loneliness. Um, With that said, it is an exposure issue. Again, getting yourself back out there is the number one thing you can do and keeping on getting yourself back out there. If you haven't dated for 20, 25 years, 30 years, right? Going on a dating app can be very challenging. It can feel like this weird new experience. And that's one way to date. It's certainly probably one of the safest ways to date during the pandemic. Um, But also, you know, just asking people to help set you up um, do you know someone? Do you know someone I could, you know, have a, a Zoom date with or I could meet? Um, you know, that might be fun. That might be interesting, even though it's going to be hard. And again, this holiday season is going to be particularly hard for a lot of folks. I think any way that you can have a human connection with people, whether it be friends, family, um, doing some volunteer work somehow over you know, um, either in person that's socially distanced with masks on or, um, you know, somehow online, right? A Mm -hmm. lot of people are lonely. Um, And even if it's just you meeting someone else who's kind of lonely and who needs help or wants support right now, that can be a really good thing. Supporting one another. Supporting one another. Yeah. And I'm telling people, um, you know, if you... (laughs) If you have friends, get on your phone with friends. If you have 
you know, family we've been doing in my family, we've, all our cousins have been getting together on Zoom, mm -hmm. which is really nice because I actually didn't know some of them before this. Um, I'd actually never met one of my cousins before this. And we've, we've been kind of getting together. It's been so nice. And they live on the other coast and it's been really lovely. Um, if you have a pet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Be with your pet. Be I with your that. dog. Yeah, but pet therapy is real. You know, it's yes. a real thing, right? And especially during this time, there's a lot. Because you have someone to take care of. And a living being. Yes. You know, so important, some, someone to snuggle with, you know? Um, and I know this may sound, it may sound a little silly unless you're one of my plant people, houseplant hobby, a shout out. But, you know, plants, um, if you have a plant, I love plants, house plants. And if you have a plant, even if you were just, you know, taking um, a, a, a cloth, like a dishcloth or a paper towel or something and wetting it and, you know, putting a little dish soap on it and like literally wiping down each one of your leaves, you are touching something living. You are taking care of yes. something living. And we need that right now. And as, that's what it is, I think, the human connection, and correct me if I'm wrong, but everyone needs something that's living. You need that connection. Yes, yes, so You much. need that connection. What about um, now, when you were dating back then, I'm older, <laughs> back then you didn't have Match mm -hmm. or um, eHarmony or you didn't have where you use Bumblebee or yeah. any of the love connection apps. How do you feel towards that, Dr. Casca? Um, you know, they're tricky, right? Just like any kind of social media, they can make you feel really wonderful about yourself and really good if you're willing to accept that part of your, you know, of them. They can also make you feel really awful about yourself if you are not getting a lot of connections or maybe if you've been on the same ones for a long period of time and you're feeling kind of stale on them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that can be really challenging. But dating apps are really wonderful. And they really, if you set up a profile that really speaks to who you are as a person um, and what is important to you and who you are looking for, you have a nice profile picture that actually looks like you. It doesn't, you know, it's not a picture of uh, not a cat 20 fit. years ago or <laughs> we've, I, I will say I have definitely, I had, I briefly, when I was younger, was on dating apps when they were like much, you know, earlier on first came out. Um, and I, I remember meeting people where it was like, I, you know, this person <laughs> does not, they're, you know. This is not your not, picture. <laughs> yeah. So make sure it's a picture of you <laughs> um, now, recently, you know, mm -hmm. um, but they can be wonderful. Um, but expect just like in all dating, you're going to be disappointed sometimes. Right? Yes. Um, yes. And that's important. With that said, you could meet someone who's wonderful or maybe a few people who are wonderful. Now, do you suggest, I always tell people to join clubs, um, mm -hmm. yeah. cooking clubs, wine clubs, travel clubs, because you meet like-minded people. Now you are the expert what do you suggest? Most definitely. In fact, one of the things that I had here and, you know, some suggestions that I had for you were things like if you have a house of worship, you know, mm -hmm. of any kind, and that's a place of community and connection for you. Do that, right? For me, I used to, I, I, I have that too, but I also practice yoga, right? Um, my yoga studio, I, I remember the first time I walked in there, I felt like, wow, I don't know any of these people, but they feel like there's a community vibe going on here. You know, um, any place, right? You said a reading club, right? Whether it's a big group or a small group, you need to find the group of people that you feel connected with, the group of people that speaks to you, um, right? You and I are female entrepreneurs, right? That is a group that we can find some level of connection with potentially, um, you know, so anything that you can do that feels like a meaningful connection for you. Um, and that 
not just a place that you are giving of yourself to, but that's also feeding a need for you too. Okay, okay, it is. I agree. I'm so excited because you're giving so much information that I think our listeners out there, all the ladies who are listening, can use in today's world because we have listeners from age 25 to 55. Mm -hmm. And some of our listeners, the young millennials, you know, they do a lot of texting. Yeah. So what do you say to those, to me at my age, I'm like, all text is just so impersonal, mm -hmm. but to them, yeah. texting is how they talk. So what is that? Explain that to a, um, the, where I can get an understanding of the millennials and they can get an understanding of where I'm coming from. Can you help me? Yeah, yeah. It's a great question. Um, I think particularly when it comes to dating, right? I, I, and I'll say this. There is, there are definitely when it comes to technology, some age breakdowns for sure. And I don't want to overlook that. With that said, I've known some people who are in the 55 to 65 who love texting and really hate talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I've met some 25 year olds who love talking on the phone are really not into texting. So <laughs> um, with that caveat, um, I do think that, you know, texting, like you said, if pe people who are in the 25 to 35 year old bracket, they did a lot more texting. They grew up doing a lot more typing and texting. Mm -hmm. And so that um, feels like a way that they can enrich their communication. And in some ways it can, right? Um, if I am dealing with something that's like a minor issue, um, that can be a really nice way to have a conversation with someone. It's not for me a whole or a complete conversation about a complicated issue. And I think for whether you're younger or whether you're older, if you're trying to substitute text for um, a conversation that really should be had in person or mm -hmm. right over the phone, it's not a good substitute. And so, you know, if something is a hotbed issue, whether it's with a friend or a partner or a potential partner, I wouldn't really just text about it. Um, with that said, um, right now during COVID, you know, one of the podcasts or one of the podcasts, excuse me, one of the videos <laughs> that I just did for my YouTube channel, Bet Me a Date, is um, about sex and the pandemic and dating mm -hmm. okay. and how do people bait, date during the pandemic? Um, and also how do people um, potentially get sexual with a partner and quite frankly, using a phone is a great way to do that because it's really not safe if you just met someone to be in person getting sexual with them unless they've been quarantining for more than 14 days. I hope that's Well, go okay. ahead, elaborate on yeah. that. Elaborate so, about your show and the, go ahead. Yeah, so um, so on my, my, my YouTube channel, we talk about all different kinds of issues in dating, different problems that come up with people with dating. Um, and so one of the things my, my spouse is, he's a molecular biologist um, and he's particularly a virologist. So he knows a lot about viruses, he studies viruses. And so I felt like as a health psychologist and with him as a virologist, I felt like I could, we talk about the pandemic, we talk about safety and what's safe behavior and what's not right now. And a lot of people feel very confused about what is safe behavior and what's not. Um, so I had people, um, you know, ask me different questions about what is safe dating and sexual behavior during the pandemic. Um, you know, somebody asked something like, um, it, should I, you know, if I want to get intimate with someone, should, should we use condoms and a mask? And I was like, yeah, but you can still get infected with COVID, right? Right the safest way to have sex with someone right now is, guess what, through your phone, um, <laughs> talking to someone, sexting with someone, right? Send sexy pictures if you want to, if you feel comfortable with that. Know mm -hmm. that that's not always the most, uh, you know, phones can be hacked, right? Yeah. <laughs> phones can be so be careful with the pictures, Be listen. careful with the pictures. Please be careful. Even if you're, let's say you wanted, right? Let's say you wanted to have a video chat sex with someone that you met that you're interested in that's a much safer way in a lot of ways to have sex with someone right now that you just met someone that you're not quarantining with 
With that said, um, they could record you. So you got to be careful about that. Yes, your yes. privacy. Um, so, you know, it, it's complicated. Um, but I also want people to know there are safer ways, you know, in terms of viral transmission to have sex right now. And that's really, you know, you can get fun on the phone. You can get freaky on the phone. And that's great. <laughs> you know, like, I, and I, you know, it's funny, right? But like, I tell people, you know, people who are married for a long time, you know, they enjoy doing that. That's fun and different than their usual. For a lot right. Of Exciting. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to spice up the sex life. Yes. Very wow. exciting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your YouTube channel. If people yeah. wanted to listen and tune in. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So it's, it's called Bet Me a Date. Um, and like I said, we talk a lot about dating, um, parts of dating anxiety that come up for people. Um, and I also, um, have created a website that's betmeadate.com where we help people who, um, are having dating anxiety, people who have difficulty putting themselves out there in the dating world, you can actually bet against yourself, let's say, and you can bet anywhere between a hundred dollars, excuse me, uh, $25 and a thousand dollars, $25 and a thousand dollars. You can bet, um, yourself, let's say a hundred bucks that you're going to ask out five people in 30 days in that month. And if you make your goal, we will give you your money back. So mm -hmm. it's a great way to incentivize yourself to bet against yourself to meet your dating goals. Um, we also have a user forum, videos, a dating quiz. You can find out all these different things about yourself. Um, oh, wow. Interesting. Through our website. So that's betmeadate.com. And also bet people can set up um, dating consultation calls with me. Bet me a date dot com. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fun and interesting. I hope the listeners out there that you all go to bet me a date dot com and participate. I mean, it could bring out, it can reveal some things that may be holding you back mm -hmm. and they can schedule a consultation to talk some things out with you. Um, do you think bro repetitive, broken relationships, abusive relationships stand in the way, doctor? 100%. That is definitely another thing. You know, we get into patterns with mm -hmm. our dating, um, with our family members, right? It could be other relationships in our lives. We have a tendency to get into patterns with relationships and that um, can come back to bite us, right? And so um, people who are in toxic and abusive relationships often will, they lose confidence in mm -hmm. other people and trust in other people, but more importantly, they actually will tend to lose confidence and trust in themselves. Okay. And what happens when that occurs is that they miss red flags. They miss the red flags of the other person because they, they, they think, oh, well, that's not really a big deal. I must be, you know, overanalyzing that when actually something could be a serious red flag. And so having had a history of abusive or toxic relationships with friends, with family members, and with dating, they will, those, those patterns will tend to repeat themselves. Um, and it's really helpful to have uh, a therapist or a dating coach. Um, but also, you know, if you have any reservation, any at all, about the person that you are interested in, you know, take a step back. Ask friends who you really do trust or family members who you really do trust. I'm seeing this or I'm noticing this. What do you think? And try not to downplay it or overplay it. Um, that's one thing that happens is sometimes something sketchy will happen from the other mm -hmm. partner and people will go, oh, but it wasn't really that big of a deal. Well, maybe it was a big deal or maybe it's a sign that there's a bigger deal to come. Um, what can happen is that um, with someone who is a, <clears throat> a, a toxic partner or an abuser is that 
they will constantly just try and push the boundaries further and further and further and see how far they can push it. So mm -hmm. a behavior that seems not that bad in the beginning or like maybe like a yellow flag rather than a red flag, yes. they're gonna keep pushing until all of a sudden you realize maybe even years down the road, oh my God, I'm with this person. I am isolated away from my friends and family. So um, bad you know, or whatever it is, right? Um, right? Or, wow, this person is physically abusing me or they're emotionally abusing me and I feel like I can't get out. So we want to try and develop boundaries even before you get into a relationship. What are things that didn't work for me in past relationships? Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what were some of those red flags that I overlooked? Um, how do I see them next time? before you even start dating again, if you can, mm -hmm. right? Sit down and do the work. And then you can get into a more healthy relationship. Um, but also when you start to see any red flags, check them with yourself, check them with people who you really trust, who you know you can depend on their judgment, um, people who you feel like have excellent judgment and see what they say. And trust yourself, oh, you, that's know, good. you know a lot. Now, I'm going to ask a question that is dating different among different races, nationalities? Mm -hmm. That is an excellent question. In fact, actually, one of the, um, one of the uh, interviews that we did for my YouTube channel for Bet Me a Date is with um, a woman who is a sociologist. Uh, she's a sociology professor. Um, and she talks, she studies and she talks about, um, black women dating and how hard actually that it is for black women to, um, to date, um, both men of their own race, as well as outside of their race. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a really interesting interview because there's a lot of social stigma. Um, likewise race in terms of race. Uh, Asian men, Southeast Asian men have a, a hard time um, sometimes with dating. Uh, mm -hmm. Culturally in, in the United States, they are often seen as not true, right? If you meet different people, this is not necessarily true, but they are, they are viewed um, as oftentimes being meek. Um, that's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so there are these unfair stereotypes that have gotten built up um, about different groups of people and different races. I'm sure that that's probably true in some religious groups or other yes. groups too, that there are stereotypes that exist that cause people to feel uncomfortable with dating, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, amongst those groups. And that's really challenging. Um, Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. So what would you say, Dr. X, um, for a person you just said earlier that they need to check themselves. So we are, I call it date yourself before dating someone else. Yeah. How can they go <clears throat> the steps they can take to break the old habits of mm -hmm. the repetitive, you know, broken relationships? What's just a two or three, a couple of steps, yeah. maybe our listener is out there and she want to break the pattern. So I think what that would you is an excellent, excellent question. Um, because I think a lot of people see themselves doing the same thing or they think they see themselves doing the same thing, but they're not quite sure. Um, <clears throat> I would say one of the main things to do is, again, sit down and write about it. What are the things that I saw that, you know, this partner and that partner and the next partner and the next partner all had in common that, you know, was a bad pattern um, or an inappropriate or negative or toxic or abusive pattern. Um, when did I first start to see those flags? What were some, you know, hindsight vision is 2020, right? So how could I have seen some things before or what were things that I know looking back that I missed but that were there, that's one thing. So ask yourself, really sit down and have an honest conversation with yourself. Two, therapy, dating coaching or consultation, um, excellent, excellent ways. 
three. Um, and this is actually one of the bets that we have is, can you sit down again with a trusted friend or family member mm -hmm. and say, what is happening? What do you see, right? You've seen, you've met my last three partners, right? What do you see me doing over and over and over again? What are the mistakes that I'm making? Mm -hmm. um, how did you know I was unhappy? Um, you know, were there red flags that you saw that I missed? Mm -hmm. What were those? Uh, you know, you can ask, almost do an interview with your friends and family who are trusted, who have seen this pattern in you again and again. Um, and ask them what they think. A really, as hard as it may be and as uncomfortable as it may be and as defensive as you might feel, can right. you approach that conversation with openness, with mm -hmm. curiosity? Um, you know, those, those feel like really important, really truly being curious. What am I doing that isn't working? Great. Okay, I must ask you now. We're getting a little personal. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? I have been married for 11 and a half years. Well, congratulations, congratulations. Now, did you and your husband come up with this bet me a date or just you yourself? How is it? I mean, two smart, great minds in the home together. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet of you. I will say, well, my husband is wonderful and he's a very bright guy. Um, actually, I have a few friends we have from graduate school. We have a mastermind group together. Um, and I didn't even, I wasn't even really planning on working on this project, mm -hmm. but my friends are my friends and colleagues, but really truly friends are so amazing. So Dr. Camille Sinclair, mm -hmm. um, who's out in Colorado. Um, Dr. Camille Sinclair, yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dr. Megan Byer. Um, who is down in Maryland. She is amazing. Um, and Dr. Heather Grugo. Uh, these three friends and colleagues have helped me make this dream a reality and they supported me along the way. I needed support. I could not have created Bet Me A Date and created all these videos and all this content mm -hmm. without their support. Um, and, you know, a lot of conversations, a lot of us talking about what we were working on. Um, they have their projects and I have mine, mm -hmm. um, but they are incredibly bright, creative, just loving people. And they gave me their whole heart. And I tried to help them in supporting them with the businesses that they have created. Um, and also really a lot of conversations with friends, with family, with other people's friends and family that were willing to talk to me about this website and this work that I've created. You are doing an awesome job, I must say myself. Now, what do we say, doctor, to those women who are shy? Like me, I never meet a stranger. Mm -hmm. Wherever I go, I don't mind saying hello, introducing myself. What do we say to those women who may be shy that, because now I'm learning men are also afraid to take the first step. Yes, so what do you say to those are. people? Um, so first of all, I do want to put, it's not totally true generationally, but I am noticing that younger people, because they kind of grew up with computers and online dating, they don't always have the same kinds of um, skills in terms of um, dating and socialization per se that older people, you know, above, let's say the age of 35, 30, 35, right, have um, because we didn't grow up quite as much with computers. Um, Stick around for more information from me on dating and COVID and dealing with isolation during COVID. So, you know, again, right, I'm a hyper social person, right? I have a lot of friends. I say hello to everybody. I'm like, um, do you ever see, do you ever see Forrest Gump, right? There's this, yes. he's on the boat and <laughs> Lieutenant Dan is on the boat going by and he's like, and then he dives into the water. That sounds like me and you, right? <laughs> 
the, a lot of people are shy and that is okay. That is normal. That is natural. It is fine. It is just the way you are. And actually in some ways it can be a real great strength to who you are and your personality. Yes, it can. Um, I think small gatherings, I think meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, it's actually one of the ways that you know, dating can be a wonderful place for you because if you're shy, if you're a one-on-one -on -one person, then just being more introverted and just being, you know, able to just see one person and have one conversation and not have to deal with a whole crowd of people can be a little bit more intimate for you. With that said, um, you know, you don't have to reveal anything that feels uncomfortable for you to reveal. You do have to put yourself out there. No one is going to fall in your lap. No one is going to come to you, to your house during this pandemic while you're quarantined and say, hello, I'd love to meet you, right? That's right. Just not going to happen. Um, and so it is, you do have to put yourself out there, but you can put yourself out there in a way that feels maybe a little bit safer, a little bit more comfortable to you. You can also say on your dating profile, I'm a little shy, I'm a little bit of an introvert. Um, you know, if you want to be honest and upfront about that, that's mm -hmm. okay. That's totally fine. And it's, it's something that may even draw someone else who's also shy in a little bit, or um, perhaps someone who is very extroverted might feel very comfortable or even more comfortable with someone who's shy. They might shy. opposites yeah, that, attract. They can for sure. Yeah. They can. So, Doctor, what do we say about those who haven't had any dating experience, who doesn't have the experience? I know we've been talking about that. And they may feel, what, what's the lack of, I'm trying to choose a good word, giving up hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On hopeless. that they were hopeless. I didn't want to say hopeless, giving up hope that they may not meet anyone you know and it's easy to get to that place right when you notice that you are starting to give up hope um you need to try and do a refresh you need to go back to square one and and even maybe you completely erase your dating profile you completely erase what you have and you start over or you take what you have and you give it to a friend and you say, you know what, you edit this, you, you take over, I need help, I need mm -hmm. support. Go back to Google, right? What should I have in my dating profile? Yes, what, yes. Oh, a good dating profile. Um, a lot of people are not super genuine. They feel like they're putting, they put out there what they think other people want to hear. Want to hear. They don't put out what they themselves um, really feel or who they really are. If you are, you know, someone who is really into, I don't know, collecting, you know, baseball I, cards. I yeah, anything. <laughs> Pokemon cards, right? Right, right. Oh, but, you know, like that may not be the most attractive thing, but you never know. You never it's know. You. Into that. That's right. It's you. It's who you are. And don't, don't hide who you are. Um, yes, there are certain things that you may not want to just completely throw out there. But, um, you know, you have to be honest about who you are and, and confident, right? That I think the thing that is most sexy to other people is when they see someone who is confident. Confidence is themselves. attractive. It is, yes. right? It, and you see it when someone walks into a room. You know, you can be happy at a party, whether you know people or not, whether you could just be happy to be there. And that, people see that and people are drawn to that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not every single time, but oftentimes. oftentimes. Oh, great. This is such great advice. I'm enjoying this. One more question, doctor. Yeah. For those listeners, those women, this time of year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm -hmm. then New Year's, what would you say to our Diamond Girl listeners 
tonight. And I'm going to point out there's a few other holidays in there. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. Point out the other holidays. Well, Forgive me. No, it's okay. I was thinking there's there's Hanukkah, there's Kwanzaa, and there may be some other holidays. Yes. New, but New Year's is really hard, right? New Year's is one. I think Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's are really hard because they're very... Um, family oriented holidays or right you're, we're expected to kiss someone either under mm -hmm. the mistletoe on Christmas or when the ball drops on New Year's like mm -mm, no first of all that is if you know I understand that and and it, it is hard not to be with someone at the same time guess what I do on New Year's we turn off the tv and we go to bed at like 10 o'clock at night it's fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and I marry but um, with that said, that's easy for me to say that. And I get that it's a privilege for me to, you know, to be able to, to laugh about that. It's, it's really painful and it's really challenging for a lot of folks. And I get that. Um, I think, like I said, anytime, even if it's spending time on Zoom um, with your family for the holidays, um, it's not the same. It mm -hmm. sucks, quite frankly, it's really hard. Um, but at the same time, it's so important. So I'm, I'm Jewish um, and we had Passover um, mm -hmm. during the quarantine, during the pandemic and um, also Rosh Hashanah, which are our two biggest holidays in Judaism. And well, two of our biggest family holidays. Um, right, right. And I couldn't be with my family. I have never, in my entire life, I'm getting a little choked up even thinking about it, not, not been physically present with my family on those holidays. And it was really hard. Um, we did Zoom. Um, I got to be with my, my husband and my kids and that was wonderful, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't and the it, same. It's mm -hmm. painful. And, you know, I think, but I think being with family, I think making a plan mm -hmm. for the holidays Mm -hmm. um, you know, making a plan of how you're going to treat yourself, what you're going to do for yourself, mm -hmm. how you're going to get together with friends and family in a safe, distanced way. Maybe that's wearing masks and meeting at a park for a half an hour, even if it's cold, like it is here on the East Coast, um, outside, you know, just for a little bit. So you can say hi, if you're able to do that, if you live close enough, and then going home and eating your meal because it's not really safe. The CDC is saying it's not really safe to eat indoors together without it. Right. Um, it's better than nothing. It's still really hard. I know here in Pennsylvania, we just got new restrictions put on us um, about that. But make sure you have a plan. Make sure you have a plan of these are the nice things that I'm going to do for myself. So I'm not wallowing in you know, my grief and my sadness and my feelings of loss and my feelings of loneliness, mm -hmm. but also being with other people, even when you can't be doing Zoom, doing phone calls, maybe you email a friend or you write a letter to a friend, um, you know, read a good book. Uh, I, I know it sounds silly, but even movies and books, they can be connecting for us. Yes, yes. Um, and so I think anything that feels connecting for us. Maybe you are, um, you know, an artist and you, you want to paint, um, you know, if that feels connecting and meaningful for you to connect with your artwork, do that. Whatever would feel good to you, whatever would feel right to you, you need to do that for yourself on those holidays, but make sure you have a plan beforehand. Yes, that's good advice, good advice. One last thing, doctor. Those who are stuck in their way, shall we say, for lack of like, <laughs> changing and being older, do you have to change, come out of your shell to let someone new mm -hmm. in? Help, help our listeners out there. That's a great question. You don't have to change who you are, right? Right. As Mr. Rogers said, right, you are you are wonderful and you are perfect just the way you are. With that said, sometimes you have to step outside of the comfort zone and push your best self a little bit further into maybe a place that feels uncomfortable. Ah, that's good. Right. 
So it's, I'm my best self, right? I'm going to be my best self, but I'm going to be my best self in my best dress and with my sexiest pair of high heels on and my, or, you know, whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, maybe you feel like your best self at church. Maybe you feel like your best self when you are, you know, I don't know, writing at a, at a coffee bar, right? Maybe you can't do that right now during the pandemic, but, um, you know, what, what is your best self? Mm -hmm. When are you that person? And can you bring that person to your date? Um, I mentioned painting, right? Right. The painter, right? I went to art school before I became a psychologist. And so, you know, maybe on my first date with someone new, I suggest we do a painting with a twist. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but like, hey, if that's my comfort zone and it helps me to have an activity when I'm meeting someone new, Mm -hmm. um, that can be a, a great icebreaker. It can be a way to laugh and enjoy. Um, and again, it's bringing my best self to meet this new person. That's what you want. You want to bring your best self to meet this new person in, you know, who could potentially be a a real person in your life, a meaningful person in your life. And so I think like you said, right. When someone, um, needs to step outside of their comfort zone, Mm -hmm. again, it's just me bringing my best self pushing her or him or them outside of my comfort zone. Um, And if someone's older, you know, yes, that can be challenging, but you also know yourself. One of the benefits of being a little bit older is you know yourself so well. You have this whole lifetime of opportunity before you to really know who am I? Who is that best self? Um, and sometimes that gets a little confusing, right? When we're <laughs> depressed, when we're anxious, we forget who our best self is. It's much harder to remember who she is. But right. if you can go back and think about who is my best self? Where am I as my best self? What does my best self look like, feel like, act like, sound like? Then I can bring her to that date. Um, and you have a whole lifetime of knowing who she is, knowing when was she the happiest. Right, right. Right, if I was to write a book about my life, when are the times that I would write about being the happiest? Mm-hmm. Who is that? What do those things have in common? What are those times in my life have in common? That was, re- I like what you said, bring your best self. Once again, Give our listeners how, your website and how they can contact you directly. Oh, thanks so much. So um, there's a few ways to reach me. The website is betmeadate.com. You can email us at info at betmeadate.com if you want to reach out to us about dating. Um, in terms of um, my therapy practice, um, we're pretty full right now. Um, I have a group practice. So I have other psychologists working for me, but um, you can always reach me there at Aviva at avivagaskill.com. And the website is avivagaskill.com. I'll spell that. It's A-V-I-V-A, like Viva Las Vegas, but with an A in front. So Aviva Gaskill is G-A-S is in Sam, K-I-L-L like the words gas and kill together. So avivagaskill.com. Once again, I'm sorry. Yes. Once again, you heard that avivagaskill.com, avivagaskill.com. I want all of our listeners to please reach out to her, go to her website, bet me a date, dot com you got it bet me a date dot com all those diamond girls out there we want you to support dr gaskill we want you also to have healthy relationships mm-hmm. and all those who are looking for love during this holiday season we want you to put your best self forward yeah. closing remarks dr gaskill 
I just want to thank the Diamond Girls for having me today. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. I was so excited for, for this interview, for our listeners to hear about dating and for us to support you because you are a diamond. And so we thank you. You have a wealth of knowledge to share with us. And we thank you for taking time out of your schedule to share with us this evening. And once again, Diamond Girls, this is Pat Pearson, your host. Tune in to listen to Dr. Aviva Gaskill. Any closing remarks? Just thanks everyone. And know that you will find healthy, happy, meaningful relationships if you work on it and if you push yourself. And if you try and grow, they are out there. All right. Until next time, have a wonderful weekend. This has been Pat Pearson, your host. And thank you for listening to Diamond Girls Rock Podcast. If you're interested in learning more about meeting your dating goals, join betmeadate.com. Like, subscribe, and check out more of our content from Bet Me A Date on YouTube.